take the survey, Jared. Oh, all right. Survey time. Time for the survey. Let's bring this up. Here is yep. the first question. That is the desired scale size of the next At Games Legends pinball machine. Do you want so it to be thought. tabletop size with no legs and a main display up to 15 inches? Do you want countertop size with no legs, main display size up to 19 inches? Do you want a three-quarter scale with its own legs and uh, main display size up to 27 inches? Or do you want a deluxe version of the Legends Pinball, i.e. the MSRP is hundreds of dollars more? Jared, which one did you select? How did I vote? Yes, I you vote? went. I, I voted three-quarter scale. So you would like to see them do a three-quarter scale version basically of what currently is the Legends Pinball pinball uh but just with the form factor size that will match everybody's three core scale arcades that they've been building up yeah i i ain't got the size for that current cabinet okay like that that's too big from for my house at the moment um give me a smaller form factor with with all the features um and you got me interested so i <laughs> i was gonna select that and then I went and I had and I selected the deluxe version hmm. of Why'd the Legend you do that? Pinball. Because again, I think this is who they're gearing towards. They're trying to get the the people that don't want to spend four thousand dollars on a virtual pinball machine. Um and I think that that if they can come in at a much, much lower price point, that is a much better entry four people here's the thing though that i worry about <laughs> what their deluxe version is what makes it deluxe is it that it comes with that control top panel and it comes with the light gun or yeah. is it that they're going to be you know making it so that it hooks to a pc so much easier that it has a true dmd yeah. display in it um, i think that that is where they are going with it because remember that they are developing or they have mentioned on a number of separate occasions that they are developing uh, like an interface board that will allow you to e more easily integrate your pc with the cabinet okay so you can actually utilize that second screen um and that sort of thing so at the moment you have to go and take the back off get this like interface board from the internet from, from like a shop on the internet and then you plug your second monitor into that and it's a bit of a hassle but they are making it so that uh, you can just plug and play in, in a future board revision. And that's that whole open ecosystem thing they were talking about where all the other like VPX developers can come in and use this board interface to integrate haptics and stuff with all their, their titles. So they're, they're moving towards that direction already. So I think if they were going to do that, what they'd end up doing is roll all those things in together and that would be the premium offering with probably probably a bigger display or perhaps the entire back glass as a monitor and then a region for the um, um, the display. So you can just like do what you like on the back. Right. I reckon that's what they're going with there. Which is what I'm hoping. That's why I went that way. Because I was like, yeah, no, go just full hog. Embrace that <laughs> audience that you're, you're trying to do uh, go with and have. Um, mm. That being said, go ahead and do a tabletop. Sure, why not? Yeah, why not? You know, yeah. Be, again, Arcade One Up has done that with their. They've got their tabletop Pac Man and you know Dig mm. Dugs and stuff. Sure, there's there's a whole there's room for it. Um, yeah, you know, what, why not everything? <laughs> well, you like, know, I I don't know. What the I'm saying go high, go low, don't go middle. Yeah. and I think if they went three quarter. That's just going middle. That's going, you know, you're trying to. Uh, you're hoping to steal some thunder from the market that is clearly going one direction. <laughs> mm, yeah. Okay. All right, let's go What's to the next question. Next question. Minimum number of licensed built-in games tables to be an attractive purchase option. Uh, 10 with an option to play purchase stream more through Legends Arcade platform or 12 or 15 or 20 plus or other. Where'd you go? Uh... I I think I just went with twenty plus. I went twenty plus, and and that was prior to me looking at what games they currently have, and then I just mm -hmm. went, oh yeah, you're you're giving me crap, so give me more crap. <laughs> yeah, 
load me up with crap. Uh, 20, 20 plus crap, please. Yeah. yeah. 20 of junk is junk. If they really wanted to screw you, they'd give you 40. So, yeah. um, <laughs> it's right. Um, that was a modified Dennis Miller joke for those that uh, know that one. Uh, let's move on to the next one. For the Pinball Machines exterior artwork, I want multi cade style artwork, which is basically what they have right now, uh, primarily mm -hmm. based on one authentic IP design. Um, again, they did that with their Tetris cabinet. Doesn't matter as long as it's easy to replace. Uh, basic black with minimal flourishes or other... Uh, yeah, signing up for basic black. I'm going with basic to... black because they clearly proved to me that they do not know how to do multi cade style artwork <laughs> tastefully. Just just keep it black and get rid of the Legends Arcade branding off it. Oh like, my god, seriously. Just put it somewhere. Like, but just like on the side of the cabinet, fine. Just yeah. keep it off the back glass. Yeah. We don't need it up there. Yeah. Like, because again, they're not going for the nostalgia retail. factor with the licenses that they have is not no. going to pique my interest. So no, just nice and simple. You could do a really elegant job of a nice, simple black design. Just blacker. Give me blacker. <laughs> uh, Make it black. Next on the survey, in a lower cost three horse scale machine or smaller, is a secondary back glass display a requirement for you to purchase? Jared, your interpretation of that secondary back glass display. Do you think it just meaning a DMD or are you talking about the full display? Well, it's unclear. So it is the unclear. Question, the question is poorly worded, but I assumed that it was like the full back glass display, mm -hmm. and I went with yes, and it needs to be included. Yes, so for our audio-only listeners, the choices were yes, but it can be optional, yes, and it need to be included, no, but I would want the option, and no, I don't need the option. Well, if you don't need the option, then you probably bought well-played's arcade cabinet yeah. that doesn't even have a score on the back glass. Um, That's right. For it to be optional, well, I really don't need them to charge me $200 for an accessory of a monitor, um, as we're seeing that they'll do with other options. <laughs> so, yes, yeah. I put you need it to be included. Absolutely. Yep. Put it as part of the bill of materials up front so we don't have to go and add it after the fact. Correct. All right. Next one. It is... In a lower cost three quarter scale machine or smaller is haptic feedback or the equivalent. I thought that was an interesting in parentheses there. A requirement mm. for you to purchase. And once again, it's yes, but it can be optional. Yes, and it need to be included. No, but I would want the option. And no, I don't need the option or other. Uh, well, yes, and it needs to be included. Absolutely, it does. Yep. Otherwise, and, and, and again, if, I, if you're talking about the tabletop kind of thing, well, if it's not included, now we're getting into that market where I can just slide in an iPad and play that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know. Absolutely. So, no, be be different. Be be unique to the marketplace or, or to yeah, the space. That is a selling feature of a product, like having haptics built in that yeah. you just can't get with one of those iPad arcade style things. In a lower cost three quarter scale machine or smaller is a spring loaded plunger a requirement for you to purchase. Yes, I don't like plunger buttons. No, a plunger button is fine. Or other. Uh, yes. Uh, you, you need to put one in. Yes, indeed. Especially since you're going to have 105 Zachariah tables and they were all Which designed all with a plunger in mind. And, oh, all those Gottlieb tables other than no good gophers, basically. All designed with a plunger in mind. You need the plunger. Yeah, yeah that's right. To, to have going nuts in there. Because yeah. that, that's just button. Well, that's auto launch, actually. Yeah, that one's just plain auto. It's not even yeah. an option at all. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's plunger or nothing. The like. only way that I would accept a button only is if a single tap on the button moved the plunger back a little bit incrementally so that I could just go yeah. tap, 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 and then a long press and then that does the launch. But this business of holding it in and watching the plunger go, because the plunger just goes too fast. You're never going to get does. that skill shot, ever. I, like, I've, I've tried using the, the button method on Zachary Pinball, and it's like, what? Yeah. And it literally goes like that. There's no way you can get an accurate plunger shot on that. Although, to be fair, on a lot of the Zachary Pinballs, there's actually no skill shot on them anyhow. You're just launching the ball into play. Um, yeah, but you still can do a soft a soft launch 
and have it drop in earlier Slowly. parts of the table as opposed to going all the way around you know the the, the loop mm. true 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 well so. actually on some tables there is actually a, a plunge drop zone like you've got like the so on some of the ones that have like an upper upper sort of ramp that the ball drops through onto the lower play field that will award you points so yeah there is a there is a skill shot element to some of them so yeah you need to be able to accurately shoot for that because you know just like roger sharp did yeah, you, know, you can't you can't break the, <laughs> break the break the lock on gambling with pinball machines if you have a button. Right. Uh, next up, for a tabletop <laughs> sized pinball machine with no legs and main display of up to fifteen inches, and the features you indicated you want, how much would you be willing to pay? Uh, I think I fifteen see. inches and below. Yeah, so like basically a large tablet. Yes. Um, I think that I would be willing. I think I went up to. So this is for me. This is with the back glass, with the haptics, yeah, with the plunger. Yeah, I went up to two hundred. That is where I landed, also. Mm. And I mean, because look, I could easily say, "Oh, I only want to pay a hundred bucks," but it's going to be crap. Gonna, you yeah, know, I got. I do understand building costs. <laughs> let's be reasonable. Like there's there's money in those parts. So. Yes. Mm. Um, so no, yeah, I, I, that's why I went 200 seemed about reasonable. And that's also, and again, I'm looking at what, uh, arcade one up has done with their tabletop units, um, mm. with like, I mean, I think their Pac-Man is only a 10 inch screen, um, oh, yeah. that's in that one and they sell it for 200. So, you know, I'm, I'm going with what market rate market rate is. It seems reasonable. I'm yeah. sure they could work out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for a countertop size pinball machine with no legs and a main display size of up to 19 inches and the features you indicated you want, how much would you be willing to pay? Well, we're talking about an extra four inches here, yeah. um, Chris. So I'm really only going to be going up to about 350 for that. I think I went to 300. Did you? I yeah. think that's all I was willing to go to because I don't suspect that the back glass is going to be any larger. Um, they, for the display, I think it would m like, literally be just your your main display, display being different, and that's about the extent be, of it. I think you're probably right there. That's fairly. That seems fairly logical because all you'd do is you'd you'd just increase the size of the box to accommodate the larger screen in the bottom half of the playfield, and then your back box probably would be a standard back box for those particular build types. Yeah, so, I mean, you can even even though the back box, you know, for for uh, uh, I want to say perspective, that's not the right word. <laughs> for scale for scale, about. yeah, that yeah. uh, that it's going to maybe get bigger. I still think the monitor that would be inside that back box would stay the exact same. It, it would be a marquee, wouldn't it? Like yeah. I think they 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 surround it in some sort of bezel or marquee. Yeah, and I think you know that would be perfectly reasonable for them to do that. Um, because again, they have to mount the thing inside the cabinet, like inside the back box. So there's going to be some rough edges that they need to cover up anyhow. Like mm -hmm. it won't just be a, a slot in sort of thing. So yeah, fair call. Like if they had like marquee or bezel in the back box, they could use that to their advantage and actually cut the cost there. So that's possible, right? And then, you know what, if you were able to buy your own pinball legs and attach them to that, you know, those are going to run you about 80 bucks for those. And now you're up to 400 bucks, which is the same price as, uh, the the toy shock the well yeah, the toy shock <laughs> so yeah all right for a deluxe version of the legends pinball machine and the features you indicated that you want how much would you be willing to pay up to one thousand dollars up to nine fifty up to nine hundred up to eight fifty up to eight hundred or just not interested <laughs> um be, because it's hard to work out what they're going to put into it. And what's not going to be there? I'd say look up to one thousand dollars, but for that one thousand dollars, it'd better be pretty schmick. I went ahead and went nine hundred. I think you need to stay away from the one thousand mark. Yeah. It's a huge you Mental must, jump, and, and and especially if you're talking about throwing in shipping. Um, yeah, that's you like need to be work. below. Yeah, you're over that thousand then. Yeah, and and if we're talking about what we were talking about having it be with the deluxe, I, there's not going to be much more. I mean, yes, they, the back glass might have a bigger monitor in it, but mm. I don't think that your main playfield is going to have 
a bigger monitor, per se. I think they're going to be fine with that 32-inch that they already have in there. Um, unless Maybe. they really scale up the cab. But they're talking about a deluxe version of the Legends pinball. So I'm saying they're going to use that same cabinet. They're going to use probably all the same hardware, all the same buttons. That main play field is going to be the same monitor. They'll change out the back glass, put in a DMD, move the maybe move the uh, those inputs, make it so that you can mount a computer inside. You know, make it put a door on the back or something like that, so you can yeah, mount the computer right. directly into it. Yep, nine hundred bucks. That's what I'm talking. Nine hundred, eh? Yeah, right. Yeah. You know, I think if that was what they were going to do, then that'd be fine. But if they were going to upscale that to more of a traditional. Um, pinball cabinet size of 42 inch monitor and a larger everything then well and truly that would be a thousand dollars and i think you know if if they were going to go down that route that that's my idea of premium because mm -hmm. they've done a good job with what they've got for that price point mm -hmm. but that's what it, what we're talking about 600 right yeah um if you sort of like get up to nearly double that then there's a bigger cabinet i think would be something that people would really go nuts for um in a like a larger monitor in there that would be a lot of people just be they couldn't throw money at the screen hard enough for that product i don't think yeah but again you're so, talking there's it's that there's a certain break in price points where mm. it's hard to justify the money after a while you know what i mean well, when you look at a full price digital pinball machine for over four thousand dollars, yeah, but what I'm talking about is none of these people yeah. are in the market for it. They want one, but nobody's in the market for it. Well, I don't know. I, I think that people would go for, if they if they could knock out a forty two inch monster version of the Arcade Legends for around a thousand, and even if that meant they had to sacrifice some of the things I wanted on my wish list, people would be lining up for that. They would want it hard if they could get their hands on one for that. Because that would mean that their mates, when they go over to their place and look at their swanky $4,000 digital pinball machine, they can go, yeah, I got that for a quarter of the price through through Act Games. Because, like, well, here's the other thing. You're still going to have to pay for your own computer. That computer with the graphics card, the necessary to run this, you're still going to be at about 600 bucks for that computer. So that's going to be an add-on price to that. Now, if you're at a thousand bucks for their cab and their choice of monitors, and you throw in that six hundred, there's a lot of people that do DIY with a forty-two inch or forty-inch monitor for two two grand. So that's what I'm saying. You start getting into that range where well now you can just do it because you're already in that tinkering mode. So if you want to get the largest audience for this kind of thing, you're going to have to come in significantly lower than what is available already for better. Because otherwise you're going to start getting into direct comparisons where people are sitting there going to be, you know, <laughs> they're going to be you know, going, hey, look at my uh, uh, VP cabs unit compared to this. And, you know, the, the Legends is going to look like an utter, it's going to look like Toy Shock, you know, in comparison. So yeah. there is that, you know, it's the, it's the car market, you know what I mean? And mm. you can't, you got to realize who your audience is, not who your audience wants to be, but who your audience actually is. And there is luxury within that audience before bumping into a whole nother category you know, so that it's the people that will trick out their Honda because they can't afford a BMW. Mm. And they're coming, they're buttoned up right against the price of an entry-level Beamer, but they're not, you know, there. And, and and I don't know. That's just that's just where my head is thinking. Mm. It's, it's going to be really interesting to see what they do with this data um, and where people sat on it. Yeah. Like, it'd be interesting if you've done the survey as well and you're listening to this, where do you sit on mm -hmm. the scale? Like, you know, what do you think feels right in this current market with those questions like for me like if i'm reading between the lines we're going to see a three-quarter size pinball machine this year from at games like that line of questioning that they're going for in the survey yes they're they're seriously eyeballing the three-quarter oh, scale market. absolutely yeah all right let's so, go to the final question 
Okay, what is the final question? What would your desired use cases be for this type of product? To mostly play the built-in pinball games. To play multiplayer pinball with other Legends Arcade family devices. To play arcade and other non-pinball games on the vertical screen. To play games from other devices, PC, Raspberry Pi, etc. To have an easily transportable pinball option. I don't know yet, and other. Uh, so I really couldn't care less about the built-in pinball games on them. I, I think we've covered that pretty extensively. Yep. So certainly not that question. Um, to play multiplayer pinball with other Legends arcade family devices, no, because streaming. Yep. Um, uh, to play arcade and other non-pinball games on the vertical screen, mm, nice feature. Not the primary reason because I'd want to play games from other devices on this product, and that's all I want to do with it. Right. It would be it will be a cabinet for my other things that I've got. That's it. That's the purpose of this product. For okay. Me. What's uh, your... What's your... <laughs> Honestly, I put to have an easily transportable pinball option. Um, because... No, again... So you're saying, you're saying that you would move around Legends Pinball <laughs> in the current form factor side, just, I'm going to take this with me. Anyway, uh, <laughs> well, it's not that it's, it's not that it's taken with me under my arm, but I don't like any of these answers, to be honest. Um, mm, are really strong enough. Be, See, I think my, my, my answer for wanting a virtual pinball cabinet by app games would be basically to be playing, uh, let's be truthful. You're going to be sitting there going to, uh, visual pinball and downloading those things. And so I want it to be the easiest functional way of playing those. Um, I don't care about the built-in pinball games they're offering. I don't, you know, because I don't think they're the best built designs out there. I mean, it, I'm not discounting Zacharia. I think they've done a, a bang-up job. But in terms of mm -hmm. if I wanted to play uh, Gottlieb's, I'm pretty sure that there's better builds in visual pinball than what Farsight did. Uh, yeah. And we then I want to play all my Bally Williams. I'm going to be going visual pinball on that. Um, that's what thing I, is, that's the, know, the answer that I really want. Yeah. You know, the thing is that you, you can't play any visual pinball, pinball tables, except the ones sanctioned by at games through their services. So you are going to be basically playing games from other devices on your computer in that case. Like, which again, which is where it becomes. I don't care about their services. Um, yeah, that's not that's not a factor to me because you're just plugging your PC. Uh -huh. So, so when you say transportable, is your interpretation of transportable as in a flexible solution, not a physically I can move it from one place to another place? Pretty much. Um, See, I've interpreted that question because I mean, it's, I, I, it's I, did, I was thinking in my head, you know, again. Hey, if I want a if I want a large machine that has a thousand pinball games on it, well, it's much more easily transportable in one box than it is to have, you know, a thousand physical machines that you're trying to transport. But oh yeah, <laughs> that's true. I mean, I like, probably should have selected other, and I didn't really I, think about that. Yeah, but I I I, I interpreted transportable to mean like if they're angling more towards the three quarter pinball size or the tabletop market. Honestly, then, I think it's more the tabletop market would that be what that I is. That's what that question seems to cover, although it's broad in the way they've asked it. They didn't really design the survey super well. Uh, I guess it's easy to say. Cre creating surveys that are good takes a lot of skill. Yeah. Um, and it's hard to get them right. So the thing we shouldn't be focusing on is the construction of the survey. And the thing we should be focusing on here is the fact that they are asking their customers these questions openly so that they can actually feed back to them what they want as consumers for the future of the product. And that should be commended. That's really good to see. Which, again, circles back to <laughs> when you've got these kind of pre-orders coming in and how excited people are for this, it allows you the opportunity to stretch and go beyond and try and yeah. hit all your customer bases and give them all these options, and that is a very, a very good thing. A very good thing. So kudos to At Games for going down this path and doing this because it's a really good thing to to see them thinking about this and getting good 
accurate customer data back that allows them to make a, a good logical decision about the future of the product lines.